Millions and millions of years ago in the deep past of our planet, life was very different. Unique environmental and ecological conditions enabled some absolutely extraordinary animals to evolve, and relatives of organisms that today are generally very small were once capable of reaching and even exceeding the size of a person. One of these beasts was Jacolopterus, a huge aquatic arthropod that's estimated to have grown to lengths of 2.5 metres, or 8 foot 2 inches. Jacolopterus was a member of a group known as the Eurypterids, the so-called sea scorpions, though that name is a bit misleading, as Eurypterids are not actually scorpions and only the earliest members of the lineage lived in the sea, with many later taxa, including our friend Jacolopterus, actually inhabiting brackish to freshwater. Eurypterids were an incredibly successful and diverse group of arthropods that survived for well over 200 million years, with quite a few different species managing to get to very large sizes. However, Jacolopterus was the biggest of them all, at least that we currently know of. So let's take a look at this magnificently terrifying creature to find out why it got so big, how it lived, and where it fits into the great tree of life. Clearly the size of this arthropod is one of the most significant things about it. Giant prehistoric arthropods from the Paleozoic have an understandable appeal to them, from the huge millipede Arthropleura, which we've looked at on this channel before, to the enormous dragonfly relatives such as Meganeura. But while those terrestrial and aerial species, which lived during the Carboniferous period and breathed with tracheae, were likely able to achieve the dimensions they got to thanks to greater levels of atmospheric oxygen at this time, it has been noted that the widespread gigantism of aquatic arthropods, such as in Eurypterids, indicates that the mechanisms for enabling and selecting for gigantism in these animals is more complex than we had thought. One now outdated idea for why Eurypterids such as Jacolopterus grew so large was that they were involved in an evolutionary arms race with the early vertebrates of the time, and that in response to predation pressure from the Eurypterids, the vertebrates evolved their strong dermal armour, and then in return the sea scorpions got bigger in order to more effectively hunt them. But this idea has been mostly dismissed as far too simplistic and as more of a narrative. Instead of it being solely due to an arms race with vertebrates, it was probably a mix of many different environmental, ecological, and anatomical factors that enabled these giants to rise. Though they were probably still the apex predators of their shallow marine and freshwater environments, feeding on small early vertebrates and other arthropods. The Jacolopterus specimen that led to the estimates of giant sizes in this taxon was described in 2007, and was composed of a claw, technically known as a chalicera, from early Devonian rocks in Germany. This claw specimen is actually missing a quarter of the total length, and is thought to have been 45.5 cm long when complete. As such, the researchers calculated, based on the ratios of claw to total body length in other related Eurypterids, that this specimen of Jacolopterus would have reached about 2.5 meters, the largest size of any arthropod known to science. This same paper also explains how certain basic points of arthropod anatomy generally restrict these animals from reaching enormous dimensions, such as still maintaining the ability to move, respire, the amount of energy it would take to molt, and the mechanical capabilities of their exoskeletons. So Jacolopterus and other huge Eurypterids would have had to find a way to overcome these issues. One way they could have done this is also suggested in the study, by having a very thin, lightweight exoskeleton. The claws of these creatures were very strong and heavily built, however the rest of their exoskeleton seems to have had a very thin and unmineralized cuticle. As you may remember if you've seen my Arthropleura video, this sort of thin exoskeleton was also noted in those giant millipedes, and argued to be a reason for why they could get so big. However, it was then later argued by others that the thinness of the fossils could actually be due to the fact that the remains of molted exoskeletons. Nevertheless, it would certainly have been physically much easier for Eurypterids to get as large as they did compared to Arthropleura, since they display adaptations suggesting a fully aquatic lifestyle and would have had the support of water on their bodies. So it doesn't seem like the giant sea scorpions would have been capable at all of moving about on land very well. The proposed size estimate of 2.5 meters in length based on the giant claw fossil was actually challenged in 2008 however, with other researchers suggesting that it might have been overestimated. These researchers pointed out that the way the claws increase in size as the animal grows could be different to the way the body as a whole grows, and that sometimes appendages in arthropods can be oversized compared to the rest of the body, meaning that finding such an appendage on its own could lead to an overestimation of the total body length. However, the authors of the publication describing the giant claw soon responded to these critiques, stating that they had based their scaling on very closely related taxa in which the ratio of body length to chalicerae length is known for certain, and so they can be fairly sure that the scaling is as accurate as possible. In addition, they say that the point about oversized growth of appendages in some arthropods, a type of growth known as positive allometry, is not known for the claws of any Eurypterid, so again the scaling estimate is fairly reliable. 
The reply also hints at the existence of another giant claw specimen which could help in our understanding of Jacoloptera scaling. Unfortunately, it is now in a private collection and so cannot currently be studied. As I mentioned earlier, Jacoloptorus would have been a pretty formidable predator of its ancient watery habitats, preying on all kinds of smaller animals. There's actually some interesting direct evidence of the predation habits of Eurypterids, with a species of jawless armoured vertebrate from the Devonian that was named in 2011, Lecreaspis, actually preserving puncture wounds that seem to have been inflicted by a Eurypterid such as Jacoloptorus. Other signs point to an active predatory lifestyle for this creature too, such as the anatomy of the arthropod's eyes. A study from 2015 looked at the preserved eye lenses in several Eurypterid taxa, including Jacoloptorus, finding that there was actually a good deal of difference between the apparent ecologies of a few members of the Pterygotidae family, which Jacoloptorus is a part of, within Eurypterids. By looking at the number of lenses and the angle between optical axes of adjacent lenses, known as the IOA, or interometidial angle, it's possible to figure out the visual acuity of an arthropod, and so this is what the researchers did with these pterygoted eurypterids. Some, such as the genus Acutiramus, had a pretty low visual acuity and seems to have been a generalist feeder, with relatively weak, slicing-adapted claws. However, moving to Jacolopterus and the closely related Pterygotus, which had more robust, crushing-adapted chelicerae, these taxa had very high visual acuity, comparable to the vision in living arthropod predators. So it would seem that somewhere along the pterygoted family, there was a transition from more general feeders to specialised predators such as the giant Gycolopterus. As I've just mentioned, Gycolopterus is classified as a pterygoted Eurypterid. The Eurypterid group as a whole includes about 250 different species, and within the pterygoted family there are six genera, with many of these genera containing a variety of species. The Jacolopterus genus itself actually includes two really quite different species, the original type species Jacolopterus renaniae and Jacolopterus howley. J. renaniae is the larger of the two species, and the one that the giant claw belonged to, being known from fossils found in Germany, whereas J. howley was much smaller, reaching only 80 centimetres, or 2.6 feet in length, and coming from rocks in Wyoming. The species are still similar in ways though, such as in anatomical details seen in the denticles of the chelicerae and the shape of the telson, the last segment of the abdomen. As I also mentioned earlier, Jacolopterus is very closely related to the genus Pterygotus, for which the whole family is named, and in overall morphology they're very similar to one another. In fact, Jacolopterus was actually initially named as a species of Pterygotus by a German paleontologist, Otto Jekyll, in 1914. Only in later studies, once more complete fossils of the animal had been discovered, were various anatomical differences cited as indicating a generic level separation, with the new genus Jacolopterus, after Jekyll, being named in 1964 by Charles D. Waterston. Then in 2007, the second American species was moved from the Pterygotus genus to Jacolopterus II. Recently, there has also been some questioning as to whether Jacolopterus, Pterygotus, and even Acutiramus, which was mentioned earlier, do actually show enough distinctiveness from one another to be separated into three different genera, with it being argued that the differences between denticulation patterns of the chelicerae is not a good indication of distinct genera, but for now at least they are still recognised as unique taxa. So we know that Jacolopterus was a pterygotid, and that it was a eurypterid, but what actually is a eurypterid? Well, for a long time it was thought that this extinct group of organisms was very closely related to the Xyphosurans, horseshoe crabs. Various similarities between the members of both groups seemingly solidified this relationship for many years. However, in 2012, a reanalysis of the horseshoe crab group revealed evidence that this clade was actually paraphyletic, or an unnatural grouping not including every descendant of a common ancestor. This study, as well as later ones, instead support a close relationship between Eurypterids and Arachnids, placing the groups, along with others such as the Casmata spidids, a strange extinct arthropod order, in a group together called Decatriata. Research continues into the fascinating Eurypterids and their internal as well as external evolutionary relationships, and as with many things in paleontology, I'm sure we'll see changes in the specifics as new discoveries and analyses reveal insights that were unknown to us before. So, Jacolopterus was a truly intriguing prehistoric creature. A giant of its time, well, one of the species anyway, it appears to have been an intimidating top predator of its shallow water environments, using its acute vision to detect unfortunate small vertebrates or other arthropods, and then employing its deadly robust chelicerae to crush them, puncturing through their armour and exoskeletons. It's a captivating organism, and hopefully more specimens of some giant individuals will be uncovered in the future, allowing us to discover more about this wonderful animal.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. And a big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Dominic Bathy and Slumbering Giant. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.